The Hoka Mach X is the latest offering in the Super Daily Trainer lineup. Is it a worthy successor to the Mach 5? After about 50 miles underfoot, I'm here to tell you what I think about the Hoka Mach X. What's up guys, my name is Chris. I'm a YouTuber that likes to talk about running and running shoes. And today we are here to talk about the Hoka Mach X. But before we talk about the shoe, there's a disclaimer I wanna get out of the way. This is a shoe that I bought with my own money. Hoka is not going to have a chance to see this review before you do. All of my opinions and thoughts are my own. Guys, this is a shoe that I wanted to love as soon as they announced it and started putting photos on the internet, what it was going to look like, what it was going to be like, the fact that it had a PBAX plate in it, that it had some of their premier racing foam in it, I was excited because I loved the Mach 4. The Mach 4 was a shoe that got me excited about like the idea of shoe rotations and trying something out in terms of like, do I want just a daily trainer? Do I want like a shoe that makes me feel faster? This is a couple years ago. But I have run in the Mach Five, um, I did a demo run with Hoka a couple of months ago at the local Fleet Feet here in Carmel and ran in the Mach 5. And I found it to be, I mean, just as fun as the Mach 4. It felt very familiar. It, 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 honestly, it just felt like the Mach 4, to be honest. I mean, it, it just felt like the Mach 4. So I liked it a lot. So when I saw that they were going to be putting out the Mach X, um, really like a super daily trainer, um, for lack of a better word, with the PBAX plate, the racing foam, um, I was excited. It looked like a really fun shoe. It had a pretty cool look to it too. It's got that that kind of like a mermaid vibe going on in the side and the back. Um, I was really, really excited to get this underfoot and on the road and see what it could do. I have to say, I have not been wowed. Um, I found the shoe to be fine. Um, I don't think that it feels any better than the Mach 4 or Mach 5 did. In fact, I'd prefer to run, I think, in that shoe. Let's go over some of the specs of the Hoka Mach X. The men's size 10 comes in at 9.4 ounces or 266 grams. The Hoka Mach X is a 39 millimeter heel with a 34 millimeter forefoot, giving it a 5 millimeter drop. That P-Bax plate is sandwiched between the ProFly X midsole and the highly resilient Piba foam. It's the same kind of foam that you'll find in the uh, the Hoka Rocket X2. Some of the technologies you'll find inside are the Piba foam, which adds some of that bouncy, squishy midsole performance, along with the PBAX plate that I mentioned earlier. The upper is some of their engineered jacquard mesh, which offers I would call a pretty breathable shoe. It definitely didn't feel like my feet were on fire, that um, they were getting ultra sweaty. I will say that I've had this shoe off for a day now since the long run, and it's still definitely still moist around the seams. I've also got these like strange, kind of like plastic shoelaces. Um, I expect that they're pretty durable because of the way they're made, um, but it's just strange lacing these up and pulling on them. It has this like, sandpaper feel when you're cinching it down. Um, this is a really comfortable shoe to run in. It's very squishy underneath, um, but it doesn't have the kind of spring back that you would expect it to have with a racing foam and that PBAX plate. No, it's not a carbon fiber plate, um, but I was kind of hoping to get some sort of energy return out of it, and I really, I just never got to the point where I felt like it was happening. Um, this past weekend, on Saturday, I went on a 16-mile run. It's a five-mile easy, three-mile at marathon pace, and then a progression from there. Two miles is slightly faster, one mile slightly faster. And it just got harder and harder and harder to keep the effort up. Um, and this shoe did not do me any favors. It is a very comfortable shoe at an easy pace. So if I'm going out to run five, six easy miles, my easy mile pace is anywhere from nine minutes to like 9.50. Um, 
it's a comfortable shoe to wear, and I feel like I could just cruise at that pace. It's a great cruiser for sure. Um, this is something you could take out and probably just take away a 10 mile run at an easy pace without a whole lot um, of effort that you would you know have to think about putting into it. Um, but I will say my legs were shredded at the end of the run on Saturday. I need a squishy shoe. I need something that I'll like come back to me, push me forward a little bit, give me a little bit of energy return. That's one reason why I liked the uh, the, the New Balance SE trainers so much. I think that foam combined with the carbon plate just um, it just treats your legs so nicely. So another shoe that like I was instantly reminded of while I was running in the Mach X was the Hoka Bondi X. Uh, this is another shoe that I was excited to try out um, and picked up about a year ago. And this is another shoe that I was just very underwhelmed by. Um, I've put in about 70 miles in this shoe and I never felt like I was getting its intended purpose out of it. That's what the Mach X reminded me of was the Bondi X. It was just a shoe that, like on paper, um, it should be a fantastic shoe. It should be a shoe that everyone's reaching for to do. Um, you know, they're, certainly they're long runs, but I would say in the Mach X, I mean, it's a shoe that I think people should be reaching for for possibly like track workouts, definitely tempo runs and progression runs. But for some reason, and it could just be me, guys, it just doesn't work for me. Um, I'm not going to say that I've given up on the shoe. I've got 50 miles in it right now. I've had it for a few weeks. Um, but I'll probably only use it for easy runs going forward. I just, when I go on a run and my legs are just shredded afterwards, I, I'm not usually excited to put that shoe back on. I, I, I didn't put this on thinking, oh no, I'm going to have hot spots, I'm going to have blisters. Um, didn't feel. I, I mean, immediately when I put this on, it felt like a mock shoe to me. It felt like the Mach 4 and the Mach 5. Um, so, so that was nice. I will say that I do think this shoe might have benefited from having an actual carbon fiber plate on the inside. Um, I felt like that might have been what was missing, um, especially on that long run I went on with the progression, is that when I was kicking the pace up, I just did not feel like that plate was helping me out at all, the p backs plate. You can see the p backs plate here on the inside. There's a window here. It's, it's certainly noticeable. Um, I feel like in the easy miles, you can tell that it wants to go faster, that it's, I think it's that meta rocker technology that's kind of instigating um, a faster speed, but that's kind of, I mean that's it I don't I don't I didn't feel like uh, beyond that it wasn't helping me with the toe off or anything like that I'm a heel striker anyways but I certainly feel like with other shoes um, I, I'm getting some help with that I'm getting some uh, it's holding my hand and pulling me to the next speed everything felt great it felt again like the Mach 4 and 5 uh, super comfortable uh, even on the first run, I was like, "Yep, yep, this is a, this is a mock shoe for sure." It's just, it it did not help my running mechanics at all. And I'm not, I am an amateur. I am not a uh, a seasoned runner yet. I've been running for three years now. Um, but I will say that you can tell when a shoe does a really good job at um, pushing you to run in a more efficient way when the geometry of the shoe and the makeup of the shoe does that automatically, especially when you don't notice it, when it kind of, um, it, it just tricks your, your legs and your running, uh, your running form to be better. This shoe is the kind of shoe that um, lets you know um, pretty quick that your running form isn't um, exactly what it was made for. I felt like that as soon as I started going at marathon pace. I did some strides in this shoe earlier uh, in the week, in the week prior. Um, I, it's really hard to tell what a shoe's capable of when you're just doing some strides. I did not take it on a track workout. Um, I did do a progression run in the middle of the week where I think I just did two miles at marathon pace. Um, didn't really notice one way or another if it was going to be um, giving me any of its magic or not through the run, but I will say uh, on the long run this Saturday. I just, um, I don't want to call it a dud. I don't think it's a dud. I think it's a great trainer. 
I think it's a great daily trainer for those easy miles. I just don't think um, I don't think it's as amazing as I thought it was going to be on paper. I think it's, when they announced this shoe, I was like, oh my gosh, they're gonna take the mock and they're gonna make it into like a, a super shoe, like. You know, you know, maybe this was their the, this year's version of the Mach Supersonic. I, mean, I don't know. Um, and, and I did try that shoe out. Um, I, I went on a few runs on that, and uh, I found it to be more firm than a regular Mach, heavier than a, a regular Mach, and so I um, I took it back. Who is this shoe for? Um, I would say this shoe is going to be for someone that's looking for a. Uh, super bouncy and and fun daily trainer um, something that they can put um, a lot of miles on I would say the shoe can go the distance I I mean I absolutely think um, the rubber outsole is great I've got like I said 50 miles on this and I've had shoes look way worse than this does after let you see that after 50 miles um, and so I expect that this shoe um, can can easily take you to four or five, six hundred miles, depending on how you use it. But if it's just for those easy miles, maybe like I said, tack on some strides from time to time. I just fear that if anyone's getting it, thinking that it's going to be their speedster, I, it, I mean, maybe it will be for you, but it wasn't for me. And I really wanted to love this shoe. Like I wanted this shoe to blow my mind wide open, and it did. It didn't. Um, but it's fine, and again, like, I would, um, I will use it for easy runs, for sure. The Hoka Mach X is $179 on runningwarehouse.com. If you're unsure about what you want to do, um, I, honestly, I would have to recommend that you, um, that you save 40 bucks and you pick up a, a pair of Hoka Mach 5s and give those a try first. I just don't think the p plate, the p foam, uh, the lightweight, I don't think that they combine to get the result that it was probably um, designed to achieve, and it's unfortunate. All right, guys, so th that's my take on the Hoka Mach X. Um, Again, it's a shoe that I wanted to love, and I turned out to dislike. Um, I like it. It's a it's a fun shoe. Again, super comfortable shoe. It looks great. Um, I will be using it for easy miles from time to time. It's just not the dynamic uh, super daily trainer that I thought it was going to be. Um, all right, guys. Quick question for you: Would you like to see me review the Adidas Boston Twelve? or the New Balance SC Trainer V2. Uh, those are the two shoes that I'm looking at picking up next, um, but I'd like to pick up the one that you guys would like to see a review on. Please like and subscribe if you like this content, and I will catch you on the flip side.